My father died when I was six years old. We lost not only my father, but we lost uh, the breadwinner of the family. Hi, welcome to Norwegian Newcomers, the podcast where we hear fragments from the lives of Norway's immigrant population. My name is Vedran Atanovic, and in this episode, we will talk about how we treat elderly people in different societies. And of course, that was very challenging for my mom, but she was a very, very strong woman. It's about ongoing racism. It's like she was shocked how they they didn't treat us the same way, you know what I mean? And it's about how our kids adapt to their parents' culture without growing up there. People will ask them anyway, where are you from? This is Rebecca's story. First, I would kindly ask you if you can give us a little intro about yourself. Um, my name is, as you said, is Rebecca Skreterberg. Skreterberg is a Norwegian name. I got Skreterberg name after I get married to my husband, a Norwegian guy. We have been married for 25 years now. I am originally from Ethiopia. I am from the capital city, Addis Ababa. I am from a very big family. (laughs) I have two sisters and uh, six brothers. I came to Norway when I was 25 years old and now I am 50 years old. But before we came to Norway, can you tell us a little bit about your home country? Yeah, I would love to do that. I am very proud of my country. Ethiopia is um, a country of many different nationalities, uh, like 81 different nationalities. And we have um, as much different languages also, 81 or 82 different languages. We have never been colonized. So Ethiopia is one of the two African countries that uh, has never been colonized. Of course, Italians have uh, have tried to colonize Mm -hmm. Ethiopia, but uh, they didn't manage. And we have a very unique uh, history in Africa because of that. First of all, it is a very old civilization, like... um, Christianity came to Ethiopia long time before it came to Europe. So you you find very old churches in Ethiopia and Orthodox is the main religion. But mm-hmm. we also have, I think, 45% or more Muslims. Mm-hmm. So And what is unique and what I like uh, with about Ethiopia, of course, there are many things I like <laughs> about my country, but Muslims and Christians live peacefully together. We are neighbors, eat together, celebrate their holidays. They celebrate our holidays. I say our because I am am a Christian, but I am not Orthodox Christian, of course. But anyway, there is a a kind of unity, even if, you know, unity in diversity. And Ethiopia, in Ethiopia, I remember one one time I I took a Norwegian engineer uh, who wanted to work in Ethiopia. And when I was going there from Norway, I took him and he said, it's like to come in paradise, he said, because of the climate, you know, because even if it is in Africa, that it's, it doesn't get so warm because um, like Addis Ababa, it is, it is very high, more than 2,000 uh, meters. And it doesn't get very hot, you know. But during so the is, summer, what was the average temperature? Uh, actually, from 21 to 25. That's very yeah, nice. It's yeah. almost like in Norway. Yeah, almost <laughs> like in Norway when it is summer, yes. <laughs> yeah. summer, summer yeah. season. So, um, of course, there is a lot of poverty in my country. And now, right now, sadly, we are in a situation where there is almost a civil war. Can you tell us a bit more about that? I, I like to be informed in all the happenings in the, in the whole world, if it's possible, but this is a good opportunity to hear from you exactly what's happening right now. You know, I actually, it is a very complicated um, issue. Depending whom you ask, you will get different stories. Different, yeah, yeah, the same as in ex Yugoslavia. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. That. So I am from um, an ethnic group. Uh, that is not in this conflict. So I see myself as a kind of a little bit objective to what is happening. And I feel like people who die both both sides of the conflict are my sisters and brothers. And it's a very sad situation. And I want peace, of course. And I think that is the majority of Ethiopians would like peace. What happened was like for 30 years ago, TPLF, it is the Tigrayan People Liberation Front, you know, uh, they are minorities in Ethiopia, one of the minority ethnic groups, they took over uh, power okay. and they have been... Uh, they took over... Uh... From the dirt, you know, there was a communist uh, regime and they were fighting for the freedom. 
they wanted you know liberation from the rest of Ethiopia that was their plan but when they managed to take over the whole country they wanted yeah. to stay in power so they you know they were the ruling class for 27 years mm-hmm. and in those 27 years they have done many good things of course but there was abuse of human rights there were politicians were imprisoned and uh, there were a lot of corruption people get tired of them and uh, there was a kind of revolution that uh, bring forth the new prime minister. So he is from the majority ethnic group, Oromos, you know, they mm-hmm. are uh, more than 40% mm-hmm. of the population. Mm-hmm. But this group who were leading Ethiopia for 27 years, they suddenly feel they are marginalized again, you know, that they don't mm-hmm. want to accept that they have lost power corrupts people, I yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> because they, I think they were idealists when they started but they change it. When and they, they say yeah. they are socialists, you know, but what no, they have no. followed the 27 years, it doesn't look like socialism mm-hmm. because they were just the elites, few people who own over yeah. 80% of everything yeah. and people get poorer. And now they have started a war and that's a very, very sad situation. So I hope there will be peace that, that all the um, different groups that are in conflict will come together. Uh, but... It's not so easy. As I told you, it is very, very complicated. When uh, this war started, the Ethiopian military forces were assisted by Eritrean forces, as it is claimed. And if that has happened, and uh, as many are saying that the Eritrean forces have raped women and they have uh, stolen goods and stuff like that. But it's very difficult to verify it because internet is not working and there is no electricity and stuff like that and journalists were not able to go in and verify. It is so difficult to find the truth in this uh, multi-social media because everyone is a journalist, you know, and everyone take a picture and put some kind of story and it's very difficult to find out what is true. And what is just propaganda, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's very difficult. Mm. Rebecca, how it was while you were living there? My father died when I was six years old. My father was a military officer. We had a very good life when uh, he was alive. But then when he died, like, we lost not only my father, but we lost uh, the breadwinner of the family. And, of course, that was very challenging for my mom. But she was a very, very strong woman. She was a um, housewife until my father died, but she started working. She started studying as a single mother of so many children. And she actually managed to pay the school fee for mm-hmm. all of us in private school. Five or six of us managed to get university degrees. And, uh, you yeah. know, we came out of economical challenges through education. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is yes. the mother carried. Yeah, of course. I, I, I really... I uh, admire my mother that uh, she was just 32 when my father died and she managed that. Of course, it's uh, she have lost her uh, kind of use, you know, and she 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 had to just focus on, you know, getting us through, make us uh, successful. But she have offered a lot. But she's happy, of course, now, you know, two of her sons are doctors. I, I studied law. And uh, my sister, she's engineer, you know. So, so yeah, yeah, now, yeah. now she's happy because everybody, you know, send her money, and she, she's she's living in Ethiopia. Yeah, she eh? lives in mm-hmm. Addis. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I try to visit her as often as I can. Uh, but you know, uh, after I come to Norway and get my own family, I feel like also Norway is my home too. <laughs> yeah. But before we came to that, I would like to hear all the steps that you crossed before you came you to Norway. Came to Norway. As I told you, um, education was very important for my family because we found out that is the only way to come out of that situation, difficult situation we were in. So we studied very hard. I studied law. And when I graduated, I was the second best uh, result from the law school. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you, thank you. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Actually, anyway, after that, I started working in a human rights organization. Mm -hmm. And um, I never thought I would leave Ethiopia, actually. And I never thought I would be married to a foreigner. (laughs) But that's (laughs) what happened. (laughs) Um, I I got, actually, a scholarship to work in South Africa. It was 1995. It was 
one and a half years after Mandela to power and there were many things happening in South Africa and there were many human rights activities, you know. Yeah. Um, I got the chance to go to the South Africa and I was working there in um, one human rights organization and after after some time I uh, met my husband he was working for Blue Cross he was project leader there so after we were together for one year we got married and uh, when he finished his project we came to Norway actually Norway was a country that I know so little about you know Sweden, yeah. we knew a lot about Sweden, but mm-hmm. Norway, <laughs> just a little country in the north uh, with many missionaries. That was the idea mm-hmm. I had and a very cold country. So uh, even if it is a choice to come to Norway, you know, I, I choose to come to Norway because I get married to my husband, not because yeah, that <laughs> I was, wanted uh, to be yeah. in Norway. Um, but did you have any any dilemmas? Or it was just... Yeah, because I always wanted to be in Africa. So if, but we had to to talk, you know, seriously about the situation because for me it was easy to get a job, but for my husband he it is much more difficult. So we found out it is easier for me to come to Norway, study Norwegian, get a job here, and from yeah. scratch, from zero again. From zero. I'm always saying that that's, yeah. that's uh, because many many people they think you know when you move they just that everything is happened very no. fast and uh, under the corner, on the first corner, it's, there's a job, there yeah. is this and that, totally from zero. doesn't matter yeah. what are the circumstances, if you have money, no money, partner, mm. no partner. It's not only that you will start your career from zero, but you start even the language and the culture <laughs> and yeah. friends and no family. <laughs> yeah, everything. It is yeah. very challenging, actually, if I knew all what um, I experienced after I came to Norway, <laughs> I don't in advance. If I knew, I don't know if I would <laughs> yeah. make that uh, choice. But but there are many good things about Norway too. So no, definitely. But can you recall those first? Oh my God! Days? Yes, 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 yes. How, how did it look? <laughs> it was I. It was September, I think, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, there was sun, but the sun, is it doesn't warm you, you know? I was freezing and I was confused, you know? Uh, I was freezing all the time. Uh-huh, and the food, oh my God. <laughs> you know, I, I, I met actually uh, a missionary when I was in uh, South Africa. And uh, when he wanted to say bye uh, on our way here, he said to me, oh, I have to pray that God help you to get um, used to the food. And I was thinking, what kind of food is that that I need prayer, you know? <laughs> but when I came to Nor- there was nothing I could eat, you know? And I was eating bread and jam all the time. You know, the food was completely different than what I, I used. Yeah, and I heard that you are a good uh, cook. Yeah. Cook, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ethiopian food, at least I tried. It's At spicy, least even yeah, I spicy haven't food, been, but, yeah. but I like mm, Ethiopian yeah. food. You know, I, I couldn't find the spices. And at that time, you know, we were living in Omot and mm-hmm. there was no foreigner at all. No. I was the only one. This is 25 years, uh, years yeah, ago. So you, you know? were the only one. In yeah. That, at some point. Especially, in, uh, yeah. you know, a uh, black newcomer, newcomer in, in yeah. Omot. Omot is a very little place. So Yeah, and, and uh, close to Drammen. Close first to Drammen. Drammen. Yeah, 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 it is it close to know. Drammen, yeah. I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to Norwegian Newcomers and remind you that if you want to further support our podcast, we have a Patreon. There you will get every episode one week before everyone else and we will be able to continue with this project that we really love. You can find us at patreon.com slash Norwegian Newcomers or you can press the link in the episode description. Thank you very much. It really would mean a lot. Th- those first days, weeks, I, you I, felt... I felt actually, you know, to be honest, I felt I was in a prison. Uh-huh. It was, okay. uh, now I would not say Norwegians are cold people, but at that time I felt they were cold, you know, but uh, they are kind of shy too, mm. I think. Now I understand it like they are shy, not they are cold, not but yet. at that time it was not only the weather that was cold, people were very cold, you know, and like in the train and buses in Ethiopia, 
you just start chatting with people if you don't you don't know them. But here, people, if there is one person in a train, another person will not come and sit beside. So people don't want they want to avoid you know to have contact with people, and, and that was very. I, I felt I was in a prison. One year after I came here, I um, or even before one year, I think maybe eight months, nine months, I got my first son. After that, I decided that uh, I have to study in Norway. Because, you know, as we said, to start from zero, I was low graduate. I was working in human rights organization. I had some experience. When I came here, it was like, it doesn't matter. You are nothing, you know, your education, it, it means nothing. So I felt like I have to start from zero in everything, <laughs> education, job and everything. So I had to, I had a kind of expectation, but I had to, you know, neutralize that and say to myself, you have to start from totally scratch. Start again as, yeah. as reset and forget about, yeah. but I must, I don't know if you experienced the same. I, I had the at least few days or weeks of kind of disappointment. Yes, you sorrow. I, I, yes. Was, I was mad a bit yes, on me too. the region society, yeah. on c- command, how you can see, yeah. you can't expecting me to start from zero. I yeah. already... But then after that talk in my head, yeah. I, I just... I just realized yeah. it's, it's, no, you need to start from yeah. the very beginning. And I think the sooner you realize that, the, the better. Because that, some people, I agree, they just fight and fight. You know, you have to understand that I'm educated and stuff like that. But the society is not ready for that. So you have to, as you said, just reset and start from scratch. I think that, that is my experience. And it helped because after I get Norwegian education, then I get... I, I start working. After I worked some years, I took master. Mm-hmm. And I was working actually beside uh, 50% who, who I was working and then full-time study. And then after that, I always had the opportunity to get a job. Yeah, And yeah. I, I understood it is better with a Norwegian bachelor than the Ethiopian PhD. That is the reality. Yeah. And a PhD yeah. from whichever country. It is a hard fact, but I think that's how it is. What's your opinion? I think that uh, Norway is a society, it's really supporting Absolutely. education. Yes. Go, yes. go as yes. much as you want yeah. to go yeah. to, to get more knowledge. Yeah. And education is free, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't pay for the... education. So and, and that is a very good opportunity, I mean. So there are many good things and there are many things that I'm very grateful uh, about Norway. But, you know, when I came to Norway, I came from a country where there was a lot of corruption at that time. And when I came to Norway and I could just call an office and get things fixed without knowing somebody, you know, or bribing somebody, I I was feeling this. Is it this heaven? You know, (laughs) but then. (laughs) Yeah. Is it? Is it possible? But. After I live here for some years, I found out there is corruption in Norway too. And even if people don't bribe them, but if you know somebody that they know, you know, this mm-hmm. network stuff, it works very much. And I think nowadays it's not even enough to get education. As a newcomer, you, you have to have a network. network you have yeah. to have people who would say, yeah, she's good. It's... It is very important. And network, yeah. Do you think that... Uh when we are talking about those jobs and opportunities and everything, do you think that racism, it's issue? You know, I actually, actually, yes. Uh, because if I say, just because I have got a good job now and uh, I have got education, if I say racism is just an illusion, I mean, then I am not telling the truth. There is a lot of racism. It's not systemic racism, I would say, because the system... You know, it's not the system, but I think people have biases. And it's in everybody. You know, I think it is in our nature as a human being to have biases. But of course, you know, in my country too, we, I kind of discriminate uh, people from other African countries, you know. I, uh, that's how it is. But when you come to Western uh, society. society and like in Norway, I remember first time I, I while I was studying, I applied for a summer job and it was in a food store. Mm-hmm. And uh, I sent a good application. Of course, my husband uh, helped me well, yeah. with the Norwegian. 
and I was good uh, when you when I speak Norwegian. You cannot maybe he- yeah you can't hear that I'm a foreigner, but you know I I actually I speak fluently. Yeah. The guy I talked to, uh, I called and uh-huh. he said, yeah, just mm-hmm. come. And uh, he was very positive, you know. So I was uh, an expectation. And then when I came to this shop. I could see his reaction when he saw me. Uh-huh. Maybe he didn't expect. Maybe he thought, even if I'm a foreigner, I am from some European country or something, yeah. you know. Um, he didn't expect you He didn't expect a, a black woman. Yeah. And I could see his reaction on his face, you know. And he said, no, we don't have any vacancy. And, you know, he was so rude. Of course, and yeah. I was yeah. so broken. I came home. I was crying. I was crying. And, I, I you know, I... I was a lawyer in my country and now I cannot even get a job yeah. in a food store and but that made me even try harder you know what I mean yeah. I just but because then you, you, if you could uh, turn back the time yeah. would you react would you would you uh, are you regretting on your reaction sometimes I think when I'm facing Mm. either directly or seeing uh, that kind of discrimination and some mm. other I I feel better if I react Yeah, That's the... I, I do that now. Now I have come to a point where I cannot tolerate it. Mm-hmm. So I do it all the time. I'm not very sensitive, but if I see people trying to discriminate me, I, I just tell them. Before I try to excuse people, thinking it must be because they don't know. They don't know me, you know. Because I, I have experienced it in many different ways and I, sometimes also I think maybe I would have done the same if I was in their situation you know maybe this bias is in every human being and stuff like that but now as I told you I have been here for 25 years I have contributed in Norway as much as a Norwegian would do you know I have of been course, paying yeah. taxes and so yeah. then then I, I, I think it is my right also to expect that people respect me and um, when they don't I, I, I tell them Because if you confront them, sometimes you just make them more conscious. Because many people exactly. are yeah. racists unconsciously. They do it because they have this bias and they've never been challenged. But what do you think about the Norwegians? About their oh, mentality, I, actually, characteristics? Yeah, or... yeah, you know, actually I have been in America, I have been in Sweden... I have also, of course, I haven't lived in those countries. I was just visiting. Yeah. My impression is, after I've been in many different countries, actually I have been in 25 different countries mm-hmm. or even maybe 30. I get to like Norwegians more the more I get to know them. Because I think Norwegians are very shy people, as I, as I told you. Yeah. They are not very easy to to get to know but when you know them <laughs> they're they very kind you know. and they are very uh, very loyal and um, uh, you can't get heart to heart relation you know and uh, and they are also generous and you see in America people are very you know like even if they don't know you they say hi how are you but it's superficial you know yeah. Um, yeah. Um, they are friends with everybody but they are not friends with anyone okay, <laughs> just, of, you know? uh, yeah <laughs> But Norwegians, when you give them the time to get to know you, when they get to know you as a friend, then they will be a very, very deep relation, I would say. And when they get to know you, they forget that you are a foreigner. They treat you like a Norwegian. And sometimes, I, you know, I make them more conscious about my background. I say, you know, you are speaking about a foreigner. I am a foreigner. And they say, no, you are not a foreigner. You are a Norwegian. <laughs> But then not, I yeah. say, no, no, no. Um, you cannot gossip about foreigners when I am, you know, uh, in the you, company. Mm, when you get company. that feeling that yeah. uh, Norway is uh, is your home? Um, it was after I um, went to Ethiopia twice, I think, after the second time mm-hmm. when I I was longing to come home to Norway because I felt that I was treated as a foreigner in Ethiopia too. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's because, also... Yeah, because they say to me, you have changed, you know, you are quiet and you are yeah, you what... are like this and you are, you know... Uh-huh. What, what they complained about? What... Yeah, even my jokes, you know, they couldn't laugh at my jokes uh-huh. anymore. <laughs> you changed your humor also. Yeah, everything. No, you know, sometimes... Whether you like it or not, the society where you live and the people you are around, they uh, influence. influence you. Yeah. I don't think I am the same Rebecca as I was for 25 years old. 
uh, when I, of course, because I am also older, but uh, you know, when value, your value system also will change. They are, I try to preserve some of the values, the good values at least, and uh, some of my culture, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, even if I have lived here for uh, many years, but uh, I think I have changed it in many ways. I, I have I have done that because people they notice they say to me, "You are you are Norwegian the way you think." You know, mm-hmm. they, even my friends here, they tell me I, I don't take it as a compliment. You know, uh, because I also want to be Ethiopian, fully yeah, Ethiopian. But that, that's yeah. interesting. I, yeah. like I want you to be fully about... Ethiopian and I want to be fully Norwegian, but it's not possible. Maybe I don't know. Um, in Ethiopia, we used to say time is uh, something that comes and not something that goes. People uh-huh. relax, you know. Like if we, are, if you are invited uh, to a wedding, uh, twelve o'clock, you can come uh, uh, two o'clock or <laughs> you know <laughs> even three o'clock, and it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just come. <laughs> Just come when you want. And uh, sometimes, you know, the uh, bride and the bridegroom, they after the guests has come, maybe they will wait three or four hours. I yeah. guess you know. Yeah, I, I have zero tolerance for that kind of thing, and it's not. I have changed it, you know. Ah, I, I, I feel yeah. like you know they don't respect me, or you know, time is money. You know, I have so many other things to do. So, if it's like that, I will just quick, quickly, yeah, yeah, politely, yeah. but uh, will tell that I have to go. You know, uh, in, in we have a very polite culture. So if like a friend invite you to a dinner or something, you cannot say, no, I cannot come. You have to give some kind of reason, yeah. you know. Yeah. And most of the time, those reasons are not true reasons, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's better <laughs> to lie than you know, just to, to be yeah. polite, you know. <laughs> the funny thing is, you know, this. If, if my friend tell me some reason, I suspect that what she's telling me is not right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, it's not true, but yeah. still, I would prefer to hear that than she rejects me and say, I don't want to come, or you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's kind of... interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. The... <laughs> but now I, I, I tell right away if I, if you know, I, 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 I don't want to come, or no, I don't want to come, I would not say, but uh, politely, I would say that no, I think I want to be at home. What do you think about, for instance, I think that Norwegians, they don't like uh, confrontation. Mm. Of course, I'm generalizing, yeah, but yeah. at least my experience yeah. are that they would rather not to start discussion, yeah. even if we are totally disagreed, yeah. they would rather be to ignore, but yeah. then to... I think that discourages um, exchange of opinions, you know, Definitely. this uh, yeah. political correctness, kind of everybody have the same opinion. I don't think people have the same kind of opinion. They just don't dare tell their opinion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that uh, that is influencing the society very much. It is okay to disagree. And then we discuss and you don't have to... We have some arguments. We have some arguments. And then, yeah, you still can be friends even if you have different opinions. It is true. Um, in that way, actually, I prefer my Ethiopian heritage. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Because... Um, you tell your opinion uh, always yeah, yeah always and and it's okay it is it is okay to disagree and another thing f- what i appreciate from ethiopia that is and i wish uh, norwegians was like that too you know we respect older people very much yeah, yeah. people are old they are respected just for the age but of course many times they also have a lot of experience and a lot of wisdom yes and Here, I, I don't feel people get respect when they get old. It's like, you know, that, uh, yeah, you, you have lived your life, you know, now let others live their life kind of thing, you know. And people, like, are afraid to be old, you know, because when they get old, it's like they are not anymore useful, Over. yeah, kind of. And I, f- I have a pain because in my country is completely different, you know, actually. We could learn from Norwegians when it comes how they treat uh, small children and how, Definitely, you know, yeah. children have a lot of focus in Norway. And that mm. is the positive thing that I, I, as an Ethiopian, have learned a lot. Mm. But when it comes to the older people, I have so much pain for uh, be, when I think about it because it's these people who have built this country. You know, they have worked hard. Uh, they have uh, brought up their children and then suddenly when they get old, they get sick and, you know, like you just put them at a corner somewhere. And 
That's very interesting that you pointed out mm-hmm. uh, because uh, honestly I didn't think about that. I was uh, uh, mostly the stopping myself in thinking further on that topic with oh how Norwegian they are really they have those uh, modern and good uh, home for elderly. Mm. But then when you are thinking, yeah, that's infrastructure. Mm. But what you are talking about is not about infrastructure for the older people, but yeah. about the, those emotions, those yeah. love or activities yes. or to be part of the society. They are still yeah. part of the society yeah. equally. Actually, uh, I think uh, this welfare state, it is positive in one way, but it's also negative in another way because... People feel the state should take care of us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you lose your job, the state will take care of you. If you get old, the state will take care of you. Yeah. You know, if you get sick, the state will take care of you. And then people, they just, uh, uh, they don't baby. care about each other. They, it's, Losing it's not, those, know, yeah. Yeah, this is a very important value. You know, this human contact and human relation and this that I care for you, you care for me. The state cannot do that. It is an entity. Uh, the state can provide food, can provide a place to stay, but the emotional, you know, an employee cannot give you. But I can give you if I know you, you know, we have a relation. I respect you because I know your background, who you are, you know, yeah. you mean a lot to me. And I wish it was different. But uh, I'm I'm glad you you raised this uh, topic because I first I'm glad because all of our our, our guests. Each of you get with something that we didn't mention before okay, or didn't yeah. point it out. Because I was think, you know, I'm I'm observing, I'm still observing. I believe all of uh, us newcomers, we never stop observing the societies, yeah. society we are living now and comparing with Perry because we have yeah. to compare in uh, something to compare with. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, I also say to myself, Rebecca, be realistic. Don't have a romantic view of your country, you know, because because sometimes I miss my country. I forget the bad things about my country too. And yeah. sometimes I I just tell myself, you know, maybe you are trying to romantize something that is not there, that you know? Not, yeah. yeah. So so it is also a mixture of that, you know, sometimes when we are away from our country, we miss our country. So we forget the bad things and we focus on the good things. Oh, yeah. But when it comes to this, the value stuff that I talk about, about oh, that is true. I know because when I go to Ethiopia, like I had a Norwegian friend with me mm-hmm. the last time I, I, I went to Ethiopia. And we took my mother to a Sheraton hotel, you mm-hmm. know, yeah, just so that it is, uh, my mother is old now. And, you know, when uh, she came to the hotel... This Norwegian uh, friend of mine, she observed how they treat my mom. She said, they treat her like she is a um, queen or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they open the door, they bring a chair, they, you know, they, it's like she was shocked how they, they didn't treat us the same way, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we find our way, you know, so they, she was so impressed how my mom was treated by everybody. But that's interesting yeah. to to think about, and <laughs> yeah. for our listeners also, and all people in in uh, living in Norway to yeah think about your older family yeah. members yeah. and yeah. and spend more time with them yeah yeah in, because uh, you don't know how long you have them. I think. But Rebecca, yeah. I, I I I was lucky that I know and I met your two sons with the older one. Yeah. I had a bit more talk and. Uh, I really is one of the of the uh, people here. I really I think I could sit and talk for for hours. And they, okay. is your opinion? Uh, are they totally uh, Norwegian, Norwegian, or into the to their heritage and yeah. their roots? And, yeah. yeah. You know, actually, I was um, I was very surprised how much Ethiopian value they have managed to get into their system yeah. <laughs> without me doing it um, consciously. You know, I haven't been like, I am Ethiopian, they have to learn. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, no, it, yeah. I was not like this. I was just myself, you know, but I have um, my friends come visit, you know, and they have, uh, they are together with us when we go visit other Ethiopians and when we have a wedding and everything, they are all the time there. So they are very proud of their, um, uh, of course, they are fully Norwegians, they are born here, but they feel they are, um, they have African background, uh, 
mm-hmm. and they are proud of it. Yeah. And I'm very happy for that. Uh, they like the food. They like Ethiopia. Uh, of course, I we took them very often to Ethiopia, as, as yeah, often yeah, as we get, could, yeah. yeah, together with us for a vacation. So they, they know a little bit about the country. Uh, I didn't manage to teach them the language, but but anyway, I think they have uh, they have taken some of our values. I will give you one example about my older yeah. son because we get a lot of visitors, and when we get visitors from uh, especially from Ethiopia, they stay. You know, mm-hmm. like they will not stay in a hotel; they stay in my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's very normal. The same. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I had one of my relatives. He stayed here for one month or two, and you know, it's in Ethiopia. Like uh, when I am visiting. I can't use my mom's pyjama and my mom's um, yeah. shoes. It's, I don't even ask her, you know. And my <laughs> son, he has noticed that, you know, when I am visiting there. I didn't know he has noticed. So when my uh, relative was here, he just took the T-shirt of Samuel, you know, without asking him. And yeah. when I saw that, I was so afraid that Samuel will be disappointed or something. So, yeah, he will so, react. <laughs> yeah, he will react. And I said to Samuel, you know, to my son, I said to him, mm, if you are offended that he take your T-shirts without asking you, maybe I should talk to my relative. He said, oh my, now you are a Norwegian. You try to be a Norwegian. He said, why did you take your mama's pyjama without asking her? You know? Then he gave you a lesson. <laughs> yeah, he gave me a lesson. He accepted it, talking about it, you know, from before that. They see yeah. and they, they understand. And uh, yeah. Now I, I feel like they are fully Norwegians. At the same time, they are also... Because, you know, the the problem is they will never be treated as fully Norwegians. People will ask them anyway, where are you from? Because they are brown. But they have told me that uh, friends from school, and they have asked them, you know, at the start, where are you from? And when they say from almost, yeah, but where are you originally from? You know, <laughs> or, you know, still it is like this. That if you have a different color, I don't think we have come so far in this society that people think whether your color is black or white, you can be from here. You know, it depends where you are. Maybe in Oslo, it's not like this, but I think uh, out in the district, still like that. They will ask, but they don't mean to hurt you or something. Yeah, then again, it's important what's the intention. Yeah, the intention. Someone can uh, just be curious or... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But but then that's, again, it's interesting. Is that racism unconsciously or not? I I, I think it will be racism if, like, my sons say, I am from Norway, I'm born here, but uh, my mom is from Ethiopia. But then that person who asked the first question would say, but then you are not a Norwegian. If they would, then, then that is a racism. And that, because that will confirm also yes. the intention they of asking. asking yeah. yeah, yeah. I think uh, majority of people will not go so far. I think if they will ask, where are you from? Because, you know, uh, it's not uh, on face value. You don't look like a Norwegian the way they think a Norwegian should look yeah. like, you know, that's the problem. I think like in America, when I was in America, I felt kind of freedom because nobody is going to ask me where I'm from. You know? yeah, so but that in... is because America is immigrants country. You know, everybody is an immigrant except the Indians. So yeah. <laughs> in, in, in Norway, it's not the same way. I think uh, maybe in one generation after us, maybe. Do you see yourself in Norway for good? No, I don't want. I to didn't be expect old. that. I do. I don't want to be old in Norway. I am so afraid that I will be very um, lonely. I, I really am. The way I see this society, when I get old, I want to go back to my country because okay. I know I have some relatives, some people who will, who will still appreciate me as a person, even if I get old and I have not so much to contribute. I think when I get above 60 years old, maybe I will go back. I don't know. It That's might change. The, yeah. Of course, I have children here and when they get children, I want to be here for them. At the same time, uh, if I am old and not very useful, I don't know how this... Who knows? Maybe I will die before I get old. Too, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 you're gonna live. Rebecca, thank you very much for uh, uh, giving me a very pleasant Sunday and welcoming us to your home. I, I really appreciate and I really had a great time and I know our listeners will have too. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. It was a 
very good afternoon for me to, to just relax and tell my story. This episode was made possible with support from Bergis and Steve Telson and our members on Patreon. If you would like to support our podcast, search for Norwegian Newcomers on Patreon, Facebook or Instagram. We are back next Tuesday. Thank you for listening and take care.